this A Little Happier by Darren Brown. Notes for reassurance. I'm going to skip the first chapter. We mistake the horizon we see for the parameters of the world. Hmm. <clears throat> Be wary of goal setting. Faith healers use a clever trick. After they have exploited the pain-killing qualities of adrenaline and had some poor soul bounce around on stage to show she is healed, they often tell her to throw away her medication. Faith alone, they assure her, and the crowd, will maintain the healing. If the problem returns, it is her fault for not having enough faith. Of course, the adrenaline wears off and the problem inevitably reappears. And now the sufferer has nowhere to turn. In fact, she must add her own failure before God and her peers to her existing list of problems. The healer, meanwhile, has moved on to the next town. The same cycle of self-blame is at work within the story we are typically sold by the authors of self-help books. The importance of goal setting and how to ensure its success fills their pages and have spilt into the accepted image of what an active and admirable life must look like. If we set our goals and believe in ourselves enough, the universe will provide. If it fails to do so, and this is sometimes implied, sometimes explicitly stated, as in Rhonda Burns' The Secret, if it fails to do so, it isn't the universe's fault, it's ours for not having enough belief. Most of the self-help industry is pinned on this lie. Barbara Ehrenreich, in her book Bright-Sided, How Positive Thinking is Undermining America, traces the injunction to be positive above all else to Calvinism, a form of Protestantism with a particularly gruelling work ethic. Under Calvinism, constant labour and accompanying material success indicated that a person was one of God's elect. The fact that today many people feel guilty if they're not filling their time with work is traceable to this Puritan movement. Ascetic dedication to labour was a way of absolving the terror of damnation that was seen to hang over all of us. Dickens' Scrooge is a Calvinist figure. <clears throat> then, in the 19th century, the American New Thought movement sprang up, particularly in reaction against Calvinist teachings emphasising that we could heal ourselves and become divine by rigorously controlling our mental state. It was an attempt to break away from organised religion, but as often happens with reactionary movements, it changed the variables while inheriting the underlying grammar of what came before. Thus, it fetishised hard work like its religious predecessor. We now take it for granted that we should be advancing ourselves with consistent goal setting and moving forward in a fierce frenzy of self-belief. If we set our goals and work hard whilst maintaining complete faith in ourselves, we should succeed, or so we expect. But we don't need to feel like this. Goal setting is all well and good for the short-term ambitions like learning a language or passing a test, but to commit oneself to a goal that spreads over years is to invite all sorts of problems. Here are a few of them. What happens when you achieve your goal? Then what? A friend was committed to building up a successful business and then selling it in order to retire early. He immersed himself fully in the project, which spanned decades of his life. When he finally achieved the goal, he was shocked to find that he retired to a crushing sense of emptiness. It turned out that it was not the goal, but the journey that had been important to him, and now it was over. What have you missed in the meantime? We might pursue a goal to be a millionaire by a certain age, but neglect our relationships in the process. And by the time we get there, who knows how our values will have changed. To make such a commitment in the naivety of youth is unlikely to serve us over time. We may climb a ladder, only to realise at the top that we had it against the wrong wall. What if you fail to reach it? Now you must add failure and a sense of wasted time to your list of problems.